Hi, my name is Kevin Good, and I am a piano teacher at the William Grant Still Art Center, and we are back again for another lesson with the piano. Okay, so last week we went over basically a little bit of music theory. Um, we talked about time signatures, and we also talked about rhythms, and I showed you guys what a hymn, Be Thou My Vision, and we kind of talked a little bit about that. We're going to continue along with that. We're going really fast. So hopefully you guys can check out some of the other videos um, where I actually walked you through a little bit more, you know, and also had the piano where you could see my fingers on the piano, playing the piano. And, and I discussed it in a little bit more detail. Right now we're just getting, um, we're going deeper, but we're going faster. So there was more detail and I went slower last time, but now we're going deeper. So there's still a lot of detail, but you guys will need the other information in order to help you keep up with what's going on here right now. Okay, so we are gonna continue forward with um, the rhythms and we're also gonna talk a little bit about scales. Um, so you, if you checked out some of the previous videos, you learned about, um, the notes of the staff, F-A-C-E for the treble clef face, and then E-G-B-D-F for every good boy does fine. Once again for the treble clef, and that's the lines. And then um, the bass clef, we have um, A-C-E, A-C-E, G. Yeah, I'm just making sure. All right, and then we also have uh, G-B-D-F and A. Good boys do fine always. And once again, that's kind of sexist, but that's what I was taught when I was younger. So I'm sure there's other mnemonics that will help to work with it. But anyway, let's go on and jump into it. And we are going to keep going from where we left off last week. And this week, we're going to start off with, I'm going to talk about the C scale. Okay. So, all right, let's, uh, let's get going. Okay. So here we go. This is from last week. We are going to delete this. Uh, actually, you know what, we'll leave it. Um, we'll leave it. And then I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna talk about the C scale on the second line right here. So let me get my mouse and get everything situated. All right, we're gonna start with C. This is middle C. This is probably one of the most important notes on the keyboard. And notice with the middle C, there's a couple of things that are happening. It is actually below the staff right here. So it's not on the first line, which is E. It's not on the first space, which is um, F, but it's below it. And this little line that I'm going to zoom it in just a little bit more so you guys can see it a lot better. This line right there going through the C, that's called a ledger line. And what that is, it's, it's when notes fall below the staff or above the staff, they use what are called ledger lines to make it easier to read. So this is an E. So I'm going to come over here to my, um, so you can see it. All right, so that's an E. This is a C right there. That C is middle C. So that C is right there, is middle C. And this is E, which would be the line right here, right above it, okay? So the, now the next line is gonna be middle C right there. All right, so let's continue moving forward. Here we go. So uh, the first note for the C scale is C. The next note is the note right next to it, let me delete that. And the note right next to it is D. And then it just continues going up. Then E. Oops, I'm going to make that a quarter note. Okay. Go back, delete that, and make that a quarter note. All right, E. And then we have F. Then G. A. If I can get this correct. Uh, what that error is, is basically telling me there's too many um, beats in the measure. Okay. Um, so we are in 4-4, four, four, so there should only be four beats for, per the measure. So remember the top four is how many beats there are in a measure, 
and the bottom four says what, nor what note gets the beat. Here, we're quarter, the quarter notes get the beat. So there can only be four quarter notes, ugh, if I can talk, there can only be four quarter notes per measure, okay? All right, so the only notes that we didn't talk about when we went through um, uh, learning about this, learning about the notes of the staff were these two, C and D. Everything else going up, you should know. So, but C and D, and the way that you can do that is if I'm gonna come over here and you can take a look at my keyboard and you can take a look at my fingers. All right, so that we have the keyboard uh, right over here and you can take a look at the keyboard. And then over here, you can take a look at um, the notes and you can take a look at my hands on the keyboard as well. So here, C and D. And then here, E. So E starts right here. And then from here going up, you should know all the notes. E, and then it's going up one note at a time. F, G, a, B, C. Okay? So here we go backwards. C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. And when you're playing it with your fingers, we talked about this in the previous video. But you're going to do one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five in order to play the full scale. So watch me. I'm going to play here. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. And then if I were to come back down, five, four, three, two, one, three, two, one. Okay. All right. So remember, thumbs are always one. And then you go out from there. One, two, three, four, five. It doesn't matter which hand. Right hand, one, two, three, four, five. Left hand, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. So uh, thumbs are always one. And the one, two, three, four, five that I was counting were the fingers, not the rhythms inside of them, not the rhythmic values for the notes. Okay. So that gets confusing for students sometimes because right here, if we were counting the rhythms, it would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But if we were counting the, um, the, the fingerings, so if I were saying which fingers to play on which note, I would say one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And let me come over here and add some fingerings for you. Let's see. I think it's going to be right there. Mm -hmm. So here we go. One, two, three, one. Ah, sorry about that. Let me get that back. And one, two. Ah, if I can get this going correctly. Two, three, four, and five. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and five. Um, the note names or the note, the fingers usually go at the top or they'll go on the side of the note head, okay? The note head is this and the stem is this right here. So if I were to play this, play it backwards. And that is called, that is the C scale. With the C scale, there are no accidentals. Accidentals are basically alterations of the note. So I don't know if you remember, but we talked about like sometimes you'll see like a, a flat sign, which looks like a, a B or a pound sign or a sharp sign, which looks like a pound sign. So um, we're gonna, I'm gonna also show you one other scale. 
I'm going to show you the G scale. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to show you the G scale right here. But first, we need to change the key. And so I'm going to go right over here and click in here. And I'm going to change this to G. And notice how right there, uh, if you can see it, it might be kind of small, but there is a sharp. I'm going to do this so you can see it better. Okay, so right there, there is a sharp. This sharp, whatever line, if this were a sharp or a flat, whatever line that it is on, tells you um, which note to, um, which note is going to basically be altered. Um, so here, remember, every good boy does fine. So this last line is F. So that means that all the Fs in the um, in the piece or in this scale in this instance will be sharped. Um, I'm not sure why this is like altering that, but hopefully that's better. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and we are going to play. I'm going to draw in the notes for the G scale. Okay. Here we go. All right, there we go. So it's G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Remember I said before that there are only, why is that happening? Remember I said before there are only seven letters in the musical alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then it just repeats. So if we look over here, Starting from A, we know G, that's the first note. The next note is A, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And can you guess what the next note is gonna be after that? So if I were to come over here and play the next note, it would be A, and that A is on a ledger line. Remember earlier when I talked about ledger lines with uh, the C. So anything that's below the staff or above the staff, it's going to have ledger lines. So that's one ledger line. And that ledger line reflects these lines right here. It's smaller because it's easier to read. Okay. So there we have an A right there. Now, if I were to keep going up, just so you guys can see what different ledger lines look like, A, B, C, D, E. Okay, there we go. See how they continue to add ledger lines and this ledger line right here, and then it's uh, the note is up above it. So it's almost like it's on the space. Right there, it's on the line. Over here, it's on the space, and it's on the line, okay? So those are ledger lines, and if you see them and you're not sure how to um, figure out what the notes are, just start with one of the notes inside of the, um, the staff and then count up from there. Just like you're doing here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and just keep counting and drawing ledger lines, okay? All right, so now what I'm going to do is basically, well, we have this, and we know that all Fs are going to be sharp. Now, here is something that's really important to note. I changed this, and so when, whenever there's something that's over here, it's called a key signature. When, uh, if there were no key signature, there would be an accidental on the note itself. And then, so now you're saying, what does that mean, Mr. Kevin? Okay, so I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to change this back to the key signature, and we are going to get rid of it, and we're going to make it um, C again. See, now we're back to C. And now, if I were to play this, oh, didn't want to do that. It basically transposed it. So I'm going to click that. We're going to change it back to C. And then we're going to come over here and then hold notes to the original pitches enharmonically. So if I say enharmonically, it's going to actually add the accidental or the sharp over here for, for us. Enharmonic means that it can be written a different way, but keep them where they are, where they're written. OK. So it's kept everything where they're written, where, where it was written. Notice right here, the um, F sharp is gone. But then come over here, 
and look at the F, look at what's placed right by it. Um, there is an F, there's a pound sign, which is a sharp sign that's placed right by there. So that lets you know that every time you see that F, it's going to be sharp. Now, once again, I'm going to undo that. And now we have the key signature over here. That tells us that all the Fs in the piece are sharp. But now when I redo that, um, it gets rid of the key signature. So as far as we're concerned, we're in the key of C. But when we come over here and we see an F, that means that we're going to play an F sharp because we see the pound sign right there. So if I play that, starting with G, I should say the note names for you guys. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. G, F sharp, E, D, C, B, A, G. Okay? All right. Awesome. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing. That is, um, so we just learned two, um, two scales. The C scale, right up here, and the G scale. The C scale does not have any sharps or flats. It's just all the white keys. Okay? And then we come down here to the G scale, and the G scale has one sharp, and so it's going to be one black key, and that would be the F sharp. Uh, continue practicing. Don't give up on the piano. I'm sure you guys are, I know you guys are doing awesome, and then I look forward to talking to you guys again next week. All right? So you guys have a great week, and stay safe and stay healthy.